uh, he's done that, I think, at the right time and being more and more comfortable just playing the game, you know, and finding ways to move the chains, uh, converting when he needs to convert, um, taking the shots when he needs to take the shots. So uh, I'm really proud of the way he's come along. <clears throat> I think as far as uh, just an update on Jalen Hale. I think before you get to Jalen Hill, I love that he said that he's building the offense around Jalen Milrow versus just plugging Jalen Milrow into a system. All right. How we doing? It's good. Good. Had a good scrimmage. Uh, practice eight, just like that. It's over. Um, you know, uh, first scrimmage for us. It was good to be in the stadium. But uh, the guys were really excited and only two practices this week, uh, heading into Easter weekend, then next week and the week after we finish up with our other seven. So a little over two weeks is all we got. It's going fast, but I uh, really like the, I like the way that we've come along here in the last three, four practices in particular. They keep side of the ball, you know, continue to see the things that they're strong at, and continue to work on the areas where we can improve. And so um, mindset's where it needs to be. Um, guys just going to work, and uh, you saw that today. So no matter what the, uh, the scenario was, and uh, you know, from my standpoint as a head coach, um, you want that uh, give and take, and that's exactly what we had today. So uh, I felt good about it. Each side uh, you know, always wants it a little bit better uh, just because um, you know, there were some missed opportunities here and there they could have taken advantage of. But uh, really good job by our guys uh, coming out and competing. I uh, thought we played very physical today. Um, you know, and that's what you're going to get when you get out there and, and it's live. But um, execution um, always can be better. I'd expect uh, that improvement from practice one to practice two. But uh, for the most part, I was really pleased with where we're at. Questions? Coach, what are you looking for during these spring scrimmages and keeping a closer eye on that indicate the team and the staff is progressing well? Yeah, I think uh, it's just the simulation of a game, you know, and so substitutions, um, you know, this is the best time when you can really, uh, you know, get an idea of how we're going to substitute and, um, you know, the officials out there, uh, you know, we have some officials every practice, but the real uh, orchestration of uh, kind of, you know, Holt standing over the ball when we get a sub, um, defense, you know, matching those substitutions playing the down and distance, um, knowing the situation we're in. So a lot of lot of to, to teach off of. We ran probably about 85 to 90 plays um, today. So uh, a lot of good teaching that we can get there. And, um, you know, that was, that, was, that, was, uh, that was probably as good a first scrimmage as I could have hoped for. I think 85, 90 plays, that's a pretty light day. I, I think when I, when I watched the Ohio State presser, with Ryan Day, they said they got 150 snaps. So <clears throat> I think Ohio State probably have a, I ain't gonna say have a little bit more depth because Alabama always got, they, all, they got five stars on top of five stars. Uh, but yeah, 95, 90 snaps, that ain't too bad. How did Jalen Milrow look out there today? And, and could you update us on, on Jalen Hale, Hale as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jalen's just been really, Jalen Milrow has been super consistent. Um, you know, he's done a good job, I think, of just playing ball. And, um, you know, he's got that, that dual skill set, you know, being able to run and throw. And, uh, you know, now that we have enough things in where he can utilize uh, all of that, uh, you know, you can see even the play calling working around what he brings to the table. And um, he's tough to handle. Uh, he's just so extremely fast. And, you know, you think you, you kind of have a, you've got him bottled up and he just runs right around you. So. Um, he's done a really good job. You know, I think he's getting more and more comfortable with the offense every day. Um, you know, especially when it comes to the pass game. Um, but you know, there's just things where he options to, to make a play with his feet, and uh, he's done that. I think at the right time and being more and more comfortable just playing the game. You know, and finding ways to move the chains, uh, converting when he needs to convert, um, taking the shots when he needs to take the shots. So uh, I'm really proud of the way he's come along. <clears throat> I think as far as uh, just an update on Jalen Hale. I think before you get to Jalen Hale, I love that he said that he's building the offense around Jalen Milrow versus just plugging Jalen Milrow into a system. And that's where a lot of coaches make mistakes at any level of football. 
they try to plug a player into a system instead of making the system fit the player. You can still run all your concepts and everything like that, but just tailor it to fit the needs of that player. It's like it's like special education. I'm a special education teacher. <laughs> you know, we yeah, I can teach the same skills, the same standard across the board to all my kids, but I need to differentiate the the, the everything for my kid, for my star player, for my students. So I need to make sure that my kids can access this curriculum. He need to make sure Jalen Milrow can access his playbook and be the best Jalen Milrow that he can be within that. So that's why I think, to me, Jalen Milrow plus Kalen DeBoer equals a freaking problem for the SEC because we saw what he did with Michael Penix. Michael Penix is more of a, a pocket passer, but that boy Michael Penix ran a 4-5, 4-5-3, so he can run. Oh, they, I mean, Jalen Milrow may run a little bit faster than that, but I, ain't think, I don't think he's going to run no sub 4-4. Four, four. I mean, he could hit a 4-3-9, but I think the similar skill set there, I think, you know, Jalen Milrow is more of a, he uses his legs a lot more versus uh, Michael Penix, but that boy, he used to dealing with dual threat quarterbacks. Michael Penix just like to sling that pig, so I like what he said right there. Um, he did have a significant knee injury, um, and, um, you know, he'll be down for the spring. Uh, but there's, you know, some evaluation that will still take place to kind of figure out what that timeline will be, you know, as far as uh, the rest of the year and so forth. For, aside from Jalen Milrow on the other quarterbacks, how do you split up reps on a day like today and how are they progressing in the system that we don't like? Yeah, um, for the most part, Jalen Milrow took some, took the ones. Um, to get all the quarterbacks the reps that we want to, and we're trying to to get them all, you know, a significant number in a scrimmage like this. Um, there are times when other guys can take the reps with the ones as well. So um, that's no indication on you know who's at what spot, one, two, three, or four. Um, we're just trying to get those guys reps, um, and it's good to see guys operating not just with their group, maybe that people would see them at the ones or the twos or the threes. And so, um, you know, he did, you know, a nice job. And all those guys, I, th I actually thought the quarterbacks in general did a really good job uh, making some throws, uh, staying with plays, checking protections, um, just feeling really comfortable uh, back there and not trying to do too much. Um, they never turned the ball over once today, uh, which I think is a really good sign that says a lot. And, you know, when they had chances to make throws, uh, they went and put it in a spot where, you know, uh, the offensive player could compete for it um, and, uh, you know, through some nice touchdown passes in there too. So it was really good all around for the quarterbacks. Hey, not turn the ball over, that's critical. Like your, your signal caller cannot turn that pitch. And that's my problem with, with Josh Allen because he turned the ball over way too much. Almost every game I watched of Josh Allen this past season, he lost and he threw like two picks every time. So he either threw two picks, threw a pick in the fumble, threw a pick in two, uh, lost two fumbles, but you gotta protect that football. If you're gonna if you're gonna touch the ball every single play, you can't put it on the ground. You can't get it to the other players. <clears throat> what did you see from the backfield, and how would you differentiate those backs? Is there, how do they complement each other in terms of their skill set? Yeah, I think they're all they're all very diverse. And so, um, as far as complementing, where you you know you have a, a, a hit a more physical and a speed guy. I don't know if we have that great of disparity um, between all of them. I think they all can do everything that we want. Uh, they fit really our offense very well because they can come out of the backfield and catch the ball. <clears throat> to me, for these guys, there is a downhill physicality that I think they really have, but they have the ability to also, you know, make the jump cut, get to the outside, you know, turn on the speed and. Um, and uh, you know, in, in the backfield, you know, come out and, and we just find a way to get to get them touches, and that's what our offense really does is find ways to get the ball to the best players in space. And uh, the running back position, especially right now for us, is uh, certainly a strength when it comes to the athleticism. So there's not a lot of different qualities. I mean, you can say one guy does this a little bit differently or better, um, but in the end, I feel like the offense can operate with all of them and you really don't have to change what you're doing based on who's in the backfield. I want to hear about this offensive line. You know, Caden Proctor just came back. He on the field. He had practice. I want to know about that offensive line because I agree you can with with pretty much any, well not any offense because there are backs out there just that are just special. They're just special backs out there and that's okay. 
Well, you got a good offensive line, you can pretty much plug and play anybody you want in at the running back position. Cause that offensive line gonna get you that first three to five. And you gotta get the rest on your own, big dog. Coach, can you evaluate, evaluate the wide receivers today and evaluate kind of how they are coming along, understanding uh, your system? Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of it is too. We're just rotating those guys through, trying to give a lot of guys chances to work with the different quarterbacks, and so um, they've all kind of rotated with the ones. They've all rotated kind of with the twos. Um, just a lot of reps to 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 split up, and so um, I think they're they're really picking up the offense. We tried to keep it simple and let them play today. Um, but when I look back to the previous practices, uh, we were able to incorporate um, a lot of what we really want to do with them. And um, you know, not just uh, short passes, but uh, be able to push the ball down the field. And they've uh, time and time again, you know, found ways to, to win and then finish the play by uh, catching it. And um, tonight, some nice plays today uh, where they broke some tackles too. And uh, the yards after catch were Impressive, and that's on the quarterbacks. You know, ball placement, offensive line with protection, be able to get the ball there. So, uh, really pleased with the progress. Um, you know, it's, we're never going to say we're there yet, especially eight practices in. Uh, to me, the passing game when it's done right, um, there's some intricacies and there's some nuances that uh, just take a lot of reps. And so, as far as that's concerned, we're we're far from where we need to be, but the progress is where you want it. Look like you maybe got a little nicked up. Did you get physical out there today? Am I nicked up? <laughs> what do I got going on here? So I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, just the, the pass protection. How do you see the offensive line? Man, what kind of question is that? Man, you got your ass whooped, then you what? <laughs> well, drops in your head, then they coach. But you can't ask my buddy no question like that. I think he about to ask the offensive line question now. <laughs> I can't believe you asked him that. But you get it. You got nicked up, didn't you? Like, Come on. Well, I got going on here, so. <laughs> I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, just the, the pass protection, how do you see the offensive line today? Yeah, I think that was one area, and I think it's a matchup, right? I think we have a strength there on our defense uh, with just uh, probably the one area where we could have been a little bit better offensively. Um, I think defensively, I looked at it, and we had a strong pass rush. Uh, offensively, I think we had a great run game. And so, um, you know, those areas, uh, you know, they those sides of the ball um, did a really good job. So. Uh, you know, I can't say it's like a, a, a weakness at this point, but it's something that we just want to continue to work on. It's a weakness. I've been I've been covering the Alabama offensive line pass protection all season, and I it, <laughs> it's a weakness. But it's it's, it's always going to be a well, not always. It's, it's going to be a weakness when your average offensive lineman is three hundred and fifty pounds. It's hard. It's going to be hard to pass pass block like that. It's going to be tough. You're going to be able to run the ball and lay on people all game and all that stuff, but pass protection and transitioning and changing direction and being able to shield and block them in and keep them, you know, keep them shaded out and keeping leverage. It's hard to do that at 350. Uh, that's, why I want, that's why I really wanted to hear what was he going to say about that offensive line. And he said, we did good in the running game and the defense did good in pass, meaning we can't pass block. In, in short, not saying that they can't. I think Caden Pryor is going to be a very strong left tackle. I think he need to drop some weight. I think he need to get down like three, three twenty five, three fifteen. But and then he'll be if he can get down. You know, do y'all know how good Caden Proctor will actually be uh, if he can get down to three twenty five, three fifteen in that range? You know how how light he will be on his feet. How quickly he will he he moves good now at six seven, six eight, three fifty, three sixty. Imagine what that man could do if he dropped that weight, man. I'm telling you, I'm going to stay on Caden, bro. I believe he can be something special. We got to drop that weight.